Welcome, my dear friends, to the final part of the series of the Sanctuary and Jesus. Today, we're going to look at the fourth part of our series. We've taken a very, very good journey. We were talking about very, very sanctified topic, my dear friends. Actually, the heart the heart of the present truth. We've spent three episodes talking about the sanctuary and today we're finalizing to finish up with the f uh, part four of the four episodes where we were, God was revealing to us about his sanctuary, his tabernacle, my dear friends. And uh, it doesn't mean that our journey of talking about the sanctuary will end here. No, it will continue until the second coming of Jesus Christ because the thesis or the heart the heart of our message is the sanctuary. It's the sanctuary. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Mighty Father, Lord, we thank you, Mighty Father, for being with us all through up to this time. Lord, as we begin this study, use me, I'm just a simple sinner. I'm just your instrument, Lord. You chose an instrument. You chose David from the bush, Joseph from being nothing, and all of them, Peter from being a fisherman, they never had professorship degrees in theology, but you chose them. You also came as a humble person. You would have come as an educated professor of theology, but you came as a humble person, just like all your servants. Master, I humble myself. We humble ourselves with those children of yours who are listening, those who have time to listen, Lord. Those who have time not to crit criticize these programs. Lord, open our brain cells. Humble all of us. Because only the humble will enter the kingdom of heaven, says the Bible. Lord, we pray that you'll be with us now. As we are going to wind up on the four episodes, the series of the sanctuary, as we prepare ourselves to go deeper into the present truth, because that is where the sanctuary theory is all about. We thank you, Master, for this privilege. Have mercy on your children, for we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. My dear friends, we've been talking about the sanctuary and we've really 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 been inspired we've seen the three sections of the sanctuary we started with the courtyard the outer court and then we came to the holy place and then in episode three in part three we talked about the most holy place where god and jesus our lord and savior are right now we've talked about very very important things my dear friends and it's not a time to joke around with these topics it's a time to go back go through them and understand basically the theory of the sanctuary because our sub our salvation is in this theory our salvation is nowhere else but in the sanctuary the whole plan of redemption the whole bible from genesis to revelation is talking about the plan of redemption and it's the sanctuary that is the present truth we're talking about so uh, but before we go into deeper, let us look at the current happenings of the Antichrist and because we need to follow him. We need to follow the devil so that we can know his plans to try to lure the children of God away from the present truth. What is the Antichrist doing? This is a, the, a newspaper here, a newsletter from the Vatican News and uh, the headline there is Laodicea Week 2022. Now. We've, I've already told you that the Laodotosi Action Plan, which is a book that was written by the Antichrist, Mr. Pope Francis, is a book that is basically where the devil gave this man the knowledge to write about the events that are about to happen. And it's, it, it was given a seven year. You know, the number seven is very important, my dear friends. The number seven is... When you see the number seven, you should have question marks in your mind. Both sides. The devil imitates what Jesus does. Jesus is all about sevens. In fact, next, the next episode in Prophetic uh, Revelations is talking about the sevens. The seven churches and the seven seals, the seven trumpets, the seven, seven, sevens. You, 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 you will be very, very interested to see the number seven and how significant it is. That is why Mr. Antichrist, in his satanic book called the Laodicea Sea Action Plan, writes about the seven-year plan, which is ending in 2028. But some people, when they read the seven-year plan, they think that they will repent in 2028. That would be too late. Actually, it would be very late because probation would have been closed by 20, by that time if 
this plan has to succeed the way the Antichrist has written it. But I'm telling you, my friends, that this plan will succeed. This plan will succeed and very, very seriously. The devil has never failed when he makes a plan, he succeeds. So according to the Laudata Si action plan, they are going to implement the National Sunday law in between. In between. Now, the in between is what we're not so sure about. It can be next year. It can be next month. Remember, they had a plan to say that in June, which is next month, June next month, they have to launch the Church of One. The House of One, you can see it here. The House of One in Berlin, where now they, they will have the Muslims united with the Catholics and the Jews to worship one God. Now, if this is going to happen in June, according to the Laudato Si Action Plan, what will tell your mind that they will implement a National Sunday Law after five years from, from June? So, we are basically at the edge, at the very, very edge, and we need to wake up. All right, let's, let, what is this uh, newsletter here talking about? This was just uh, a few days ago. The Laudato Si Week, which takes place from the 22nd to the 29th May, celebrates the seventh anniversary of Pope Francis's encyclical on the care of creation, the same thing I was talking to you about now, and focuses on the seven objectives pursued in the Laudato Si Action Plan. You see, it's a seven-year plan. He's, he's even put seven objectives. And on May 22 to May 29, uh, today is what? <laughs> May 29. So this is happening right now as we're talking. As we're talking, this is from May 22 to May 29. This is happening. Hundreds of thousands of Catholics are uniting from May 22 to 29 to celebrate the progress made in bringing the Pope's encyclical. Whenever you see this word encyclical, just know you're dealing with the Antichrist. Encyclical Laodotasi to life and intensify their efforts, my dear friends, through the Laodotasi action plan promoted by the Dicastery. For, the, for promoting integral human development. The week-long event making the seventh, again, the, you see the number seven there? And when we tell you these things, you say, you think we are joking. You think we are time wasters. You call us Davidians. You don't even know what Davidians mean. And, and by the way, in the United States, they can't even call us Davidians. Africans have a problem. Eh? I have a problem with Africans because Africans are people who just receive whatever rumor comes across. You receive it as the truth. You do not want to go deeper to investigate really what the truth is. You don't have an effort. You don't have time. You are on easy. You are on relax. Africans have a problem. Do you know why in the States they don't call? Because I'm not the only one doing what I'm doing. They are said, few, by the way, very few people, few colleagues in the States, in America, they are doing what I'm doing. They are doing what I'm doing. God inspires. He chooses his servants. Those people were chosen, but they're not called Davidians. Do you know why? Because Americans know exactly what Davidians are. Davidians. Davidians do not have the present truth. Davidians do not follow the last and only prophet that Jesus Christ chose to explain further the prophecy that is written in the Bible. And that is none other than Ellen G. White. The Vidians follow somebody else. Somebody else who refused to follow the light. Who refused the, the present truth. Who denied that Ellen G. White was the last prophet. How do, you, how do I qualify to be a Davidian? Because I am telling you about Ellen White. I am telling you, I have not denied. I'm actually calling you to accept, in short, to cut the long story short, my dear friends. I am calling you to accept that the last prophet whom Jesus chose is Ellen G. White. And if you fail to understand that, you fail to go to heaven. Because Jesus chooses a prophet who warns his children. So if you deny that warning from that prophet because you don't like the skate or the dress or the trousers Jeremiah is wearing, then you're going to miss salvation. All right, let's continue. The week-long event making the seventh anniversary of Pope Francis' encyclical, seventh encyclical on creation care, creation care. Pope Francis is talking about caring for the creation in this thing. This week, right now, as I'm talking to you, they are having this meeting. They are dealing with issues of Pope Francis, Pope Francis, the first Jesuit, 
is caring for this creation. Which creation is he caring for? Who cares for creation apart from God the Creator? Okay, this will feature a series of global celebrations and dynamic conversations, including one focused on raising indigenous voices that will feature Sister Alex, Alexandra Smirili, FMA, Secretary of the Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development. You know, it will also feature the first ever public speak, a sneak peek of the invitation, a new a new film featuring Pope Francis, which brings Pope Francis' vision of integral ecology of life. Can you so there's a film coming? There's a movie which will feature the Holy Father, the so-called Holy Father, because he's not a holy father, he's the man. This movie will feature the man of sin. My friends, we are at the end of the world. Wake up, time is not there. I don't know why you don't want to listen to me. I don't know why. The devil is now featuring in movies. The devil is featuring in movies. He's been featuring, but now he wants, he wants to really, really co convince you. Convince you to go to the wrong path. To go to the wrong path. All right? This, this movie brings Pope Francis' vision of integral ecology to life. So, global and local events. Each day of the Laudato Si Week will feature global, regional, and local events tied to one of the seven Laudato Si goals and the seven sectors of the Laudato Si Action Platform, all of which underpin the concept of integral ecology. Crucial topics to be explored during Laudato Si Week include how Catholics can combat biodiversity collapse. Catholics should combat biodiversity collapse, meaning that Catholics are being promoted now to control this world because this world nobody is able to control it the world is collapsing there is global warming no one is able to control that but catholics are coming in to control it the role of fossil fuels in conflicts and the climate climate crisis and how we all can embrace the poor in our daily lives so the babylonians church the mother of harlots the Catholicism, the system that Lucifer has, is using, is going to control all these things. And then when we tell you that the time is up, you still say, no, we still have another 50 years. I, I, I don't understand this brother. Where does he come from? He didn't even study theology. Who the hell is he to tell us that the world is ending? To hell with you. <laughs> I'll be up there. I'll be seeing you down there. I'll be in the ark. I'll be hearing your voice outside. No, I heard voices, voices of people. You know, regret is the greatest bad part of anyone's, our life, guys. I'm telling you I'm on my knees. I, I wouldn't want to be on a side that is going to regret. Tell me what I'm going to regret from what I'm doing. What am I going to regret? What, what are you really going to regret if you follow this truth, the present truth? What are you going to, you are scared of a disappointment? You think it will be 1844 again, Jesus won't come? Jesus will extend again? Jesus will enter now the most holy, holiest place? Which holy, they, they, there are only three sections. In 1844, he was not coming to earth, he was entering the most holy place. So now for you people who are denying this truth, that this earth is ending, because Pope Francis knows it's ending and his followers, but you, you are denying it. Where, where do you think Jesus is going to enter now? I don't, I don't really understand. Okay, let's continue. Speaking about the upcoming week, Thomas in Seoul, executive director of the Laudato Si movement, said, Laudato Si week has blossomed into a global celebration that leaves the faithful feeling inspired to do even more for our common home. <laughs> he added that amidst chaos and destruction globally, Every day, Catholics take urgent action against the climate emergency and ecological crisis. Laudato Si Week will serve as a fountain of inspiration and lessons learned for all the people interested in serving God's creation. The dicastery, the dicastery is hoping that everyone will feel called to participate in Laudato Si Week and undertake in a symbol spirit, in, in a synodal spirit. This is all antichrist language the seven year journey proposed by the laudato si action platform my dear friends 
We are at the end of the world. We are at the end of the world. I'm going to explain the seven, seven, sevens. Jesus Christ deals with seven. Seven is a number of completion. He created this earth in how many days? Six days. What did he do on the seventh day? He was done with his work. This earth is 6,000 years. 6,000 6, years old. From Genesis to Noah's time, it was 2,000 years long. He cleaned the earth. The earth was so disgusting. From Noah's time again to Jesus' time, it took about a 2,000 years old. Again, from Jesus to where we are today is 2022. 2022. It's done. We are 6,000 years old. We are done with this earth. You still think we have another millennium. Continue. Continue thinking that, child of God, because you are denying the truth. You are denying the truth. Now, the devil also, following, the, following Jesus Christ's methodology of doing things, puts seven there to confuse you, but he doesn't know that by confusing you, a few who will receive the light will be able to see this. Will be able to see this. And those of you who humble themselves when you're watching these videos, those of you who are not waiting for a professor to be chosen by God to come and explain these things to you. Those who humble yourselves to listen to a funny looking guy who never went to any school by the name of John the Baptist. <laughs> like me. You, you, you are going to get it. You are going to get it. You are going to see why this is all about the seven year Laudato Si action plan, plan, plan platform. All right. Let us go into our lesson for today, since I've updated you on what's happening. Now, today we're talking about the sanctuary, my dear friends, because that is the present truth. That is the, the message that every child of God who is planning to go to heaven should be having on his mind. As you are moving, as you are driving, you should just be listening to songs and messages and sermons that talk about the present truth, which is the sanctuary in the Holy of Holies, which is the this is the plan of redemption. The plan of redemption, it is ending this time in our period. A few months to a few years from today. It's done. Let us start off with our statement of truth, my dear friends. There is only one truth, which is the light and not the darkness. And that truth cannot be married, my dear friends, to any error or any darkness. Just like you can't put a little poison in a delicious meal and say that it's still okay and safe to eat. Therefore, my dear friends, any error mixed with truth becomes poison and ceases to be truth. Faith in the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy as the present truth and God's ten commandments is the only truth. Hence, the choice, my friends, is entirely ours to either accept or reject the truth. You know, this definition is very important. It's very, very important. You just go through it. You don't even want to understand what he's talking about. You don't even put an effort, but the world is coming to an end. Your brain on one section, or one section of your brain, my friend, my dear friends, tells you that the world is coming to an end because even a little child who doesn't even go to church, you meet him on the street for the first time, that pagan child will tell you that the world is ending. So, there is a section of your brain which is telling you that the world is ending, but there is another section of your brain that is telling you to be lazy. Not to find out what this present truth is. Not to be interested. And that brain is telling you to relax. Because things will be done automatically. You will be slaughtered for nothing. You will, be slow. you will start by being slaughtered by the Pope himself. After he slaughters you, he will now, the fire of Jesus' judgment now will come and scorch you. Because you have rejected the truth. Okay, we have so far looked at three segments of the tabernacle, my dear friends. We have looked at the courtyard, the holy place, and the most holy place. So now, finishing it up, we've discussed, we've discovered that unlike the other two parts, the most holy place, the most holy place only had one item. We discovered that in the last, in the last, uh, the last episode. Only had what? One item. And that item was called the Ark of the Covenant, which contained, my dear friends, the Ten Commandments. Now, this represented God's judgment. God's judgment on those who break His Ten what? Commandments. My dear brethren, today we will look at the Day of Atonement. Now, you see, the Day of Atonement basically is talking about the final judgment. When Jesus Christ entered 
Okay, Jesus Christ entered the most holy place in 1844. It means that judgment began. Now, that judgment was called the investigative judgment. It began in 1844. Now, at the end of the investigative judgment, where we are today, is the day of atonement. The final judgment. The time when God separates the righteous, my dear friends, from the wicked. The time when he says it is done and stands and puts on his garment of, of vengeance and comes out and shuts that door. Nobody can open it. When he comes out now, the plagues, the seven last plagues will fall upon the sealed. This is why I'm telling you that time is running out. You, you are stuck. There is something which is keeping you stuck. It's your job. It's your sexual behavior. It's your dietary behavior. Some of you misbehave through diet. You know, eating, eating carelessly, anyhow, whatever, and fattening yourself makes you stupid and dull. It's, that's why Ellen White has got almost half of her books in health. Health and reformation. You need to reform. Because you have become a glutton, you know. You, you know, gluttons, you, you eat, you sleep, you snow. It's, you are stressed for nothing. The, all that is demonic spirits. And you want to hate Ellen G. White. But she's telling you the truth because even outside Ellen, if the spirit of Professor of Ellen White, you're going to find that psychological books explain the same thing. Stress makes people overeat. Stress makes people obese. Stre you know, you are stressed for nothing. For nothing. What is stressing you before the tri Because tribulations are starting now. What is happening in Ukraine is going to happen everywhere. That is what we call tribulations. That's stress. You haven't had stress, but you are stressed because the devil is stressing you over nothing. He makes you stressed so that you can't even kneel down to thank God. You don't even pray. My friend, if you don't pray more than three times every day, every day, let me now tell you one thing, one secret, because the, all these things I'm telling you will be very difficult for you to understand them. It will be very difficult for you to understand them because you have, there is a, a blanket, a dark cloud that is covering and it's thick. Now, how do you understand these things? Because these, the, if you don't have the present truth in your brain, you will never go to heaven. If you don't kneel down, I'm telling you a secret, to pray on your knees, it means you are saying, you are telling God that your knees are precious than him. At least three times and more. Your friends pray five times, but they pray Allah. Something false. Something that will, that will take them to hell. You pray, you worship the most living God who will give you eternal life. But you don't even pray three times like Daniel or Joseph and everybody who's going to heaven. That's what I'm telling you. If you are really, really cheating yourself that you are going to heaven and you don't kneel down on your knees to worship sincerely, not to pray for one minute, pray, talk to Jesus. <laughs> more, even just, I'm, I haven't told you five times, I pray more than three to four to five to, I don't know how many times I kneel to pray. Kneeling. Now you, I'm starting you from three. If you don't pray on your knees, a day passes on your knees three times and talk to Jesus. See Jesus in the Holy of Holies. See him when you are talking. Don't just talk like you are talking to, to a wall, to a ghost, or to a moon god or sun god. Picture Jesus. Make a movie. You are good in watching movies, but you are very poor in making a movie for your eternal life. We kneel down three times a day. We pray to Jesus. Picture him. Put him in your, man, in your eyes. Picture him standing there next to God. Talk to him. Talk to Jesus. Ask him for what? Don't ask him for promotion at work. Don't ask him for marriage. Don't ask him for anything else. Ask Jesus to give you wisdom. Ask Jesus to put you amongst the sealed. If you don't follow what I've told you, you will not enter kingdom of heaven. Because first, when you find Jesus, you will find out that this Noah is not mad. This Lot is is not mad. They were all called mad. This Jesus is not mad. This Paul, <laughs> this Peter, and they were all killed, eh? apart from Noah and Lot. All of them are mentioning were killed. Joseph was thrown in a pit, tossed up and down. Daniel was thrown in lions because they are mad. 
So you, you don't want to listen to mad people because you don't have Jesus. When you start having by having Jesus, quickly, you need to do these things quickly. Time is running out. When you start by having Jesus, you will find the present truth which we are talking about and you will find your ticket into the 144,000 who are going to be sealed. Alright? Now, in this episode, I will continue to uplift Jesus, my dear friends. I will continue to uplift Jesus and crush. The, Satan is in trouble. Satan is in trouble. I'm going to crush. We are going to crush him and we will be an army. We are going to crush him. Now, if you don't want to join our army, stay there. Sugarcoating Satan. Saying, no, why, do you, why is he condemning the Pope? The Pope is a human being. The Pope can also repent. Continue that language. But we are going to crush Satan. We are going to expose the Antichrist because the word of God says the Lord will not come until, until the man of sin is revealed. Everybody is going to know Mr. Pope. And you are going to make your decisions. This is what the word says when the word says that all people will hear. All people will make their decisions. We will continue to injure these demons, my dear friends, that, that cause Satan, Lord. There are those demons that call him Lord, that call Satan the creator, that remind them that we're going to remind these chaps that their time is up. Their time is up for we have a better high priest, my dear, my dear friends, our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Son of God. Let us go to Hebrews, Hebrews 7, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 18 to 28. Now, cautiously enough here, my dear friends, there is an episode behind if you go through my episodes back, you'll find an episode where I was explaining about the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews written by Paul is a very, very inspirational book. It's a very, very spiritual book. It's a very, very important book because the whole book of Hebrews talks about the sanctuary. And we have this study guide, remember? I'm not going to go through this because it took me one hour to explain this. We have this study guide. And we have we identified by the revelation of the Spirit of God that the one who authored it, what's his name, Felix Cortez, is a Jesuit. And the whole first quarter had a lot of errors because he was using the NIV Bible to explain the book of Hebrews. You can never ever explain the book of Hebrews with an NIV Bible because the NIV Bible is Jesuit Bible and all the other versions. And this quarter, by the way, it continues. The quarter two, again, they are misbehaving. Notice it when you go to church. They are not using the King James Version. They are using the New King James Version. The New King James Version has errors. It is, there is only how many truths? Five? We have 20, we have, we have about 100 different versions of Bibles, by the way. So, so it means we have 100 truths. Because they ex these Bibles are very different. I explained that in that episode. You go and watch that episode at your own time. Though the sound back then wasn't so good, but it's not about the quality of these videos. It's not about how beautiful these videos look. It's about what message is in that video because it's inspired. Remember, all the messengers never came with beauty. Now, let's go to the book of Hebrews here. I'll be telling you, I'll be telling you where the errors is. And those of you who believe in the, because I've had issues with people saying, no, if you have condemned the NIV, leave me let me continue with my new King James Version. Even the new King James Version is satanic. You need to burn it. The people, my friend, more than 50 million people were killed for the original scripture, the King James Version. People were killed for this version. And today, because you have varieties, you don't even want to use your little, a, a little section. You just need a little section of your brain to find out that the, the other Bibles are very satanic. All right. Hebrews 7 verse 18 to 28. For there is verily a disannulling, disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitable, unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by which we draw nigh unto God, and inasmuch as not without an oath, he was made priest. He was made priest. All right. Uh, for those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto, unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Okay. By so 
much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And they truly were many priests because they were not, suff they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. <coughs> Excuse me. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. We are, the Bible is promoting Jesus' priesthood and comparing it to those other earthly priests before him. Okay? Let's continue. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For them. For, for such a high priest became, became us who is holy, harmless, and defiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily, as those high priests those days, like, uh, you know, every day, to offer up sacrifice, for first for his own sins. You remember in the olden, first you have to offer, uh, the Aaron, have, we have talked about that already, Aaron had to offer his own offering to cleanse himself, to cleanse himself before. And then for the peoples, for this he did once. Jesus only did that once. When he offered up himself at the cross, for the law maketh men high priests, which have infinity, infinity, but the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the Son, who is consecrated forevermore. My beloved friends, my beloved friends, Jesus, our high priest, took the oath. He took the oath. He was sown in by God himself, our creator. Hmm? You, those high priests in the, on, the, on earth were sown in by human beings. Eh? A prophet would come, swears in a high priest. Well, I'm not talking about these false ones of, 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 of today, of the Catholic. Those are blasphemers, uh, actually. I'm talking about the real high priest in the Old Testament. The, those were sown in by humans. But Jesus was sown in by who? <laughs> by God the creator. Jesus guarantees a new covenant, my dear friends, which is not based on human function. It's not based on human function. Jesus was the only sinless man who ever lived on this planet. And then you have Mr. Pope there claiming to be a high priest. In fact, for him, he's higher than priest. He's a god. And, and he's got thousands of high priests who he even said now they can be forgiving sins to those people who are homosexuals. You know, you, 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 are, you are so... You, you have the truth here and there, but you relax with the truth. Eh? Because something is telling you to relax with the truth. You are in danger. Something is saying, kids, stay in danger. Stay in danger. It's all good. Stay in danger. We are many. We are many. Every time the we are many has killed people syndrome. The we are many syndrome has taken people in the floods. Seven bi Though, by the way, during Noah's time, the earth had populated to almost 7 billion. <laughs> and this statistic is not... Biblically, it will make sense, and also outside biblically, they have researched, they have found out that the world was overpopulated. It was heavy. All those went in the water. There were many. This syndrome of we are many, he's alone, he's wrong, we are right. It will take you where the others went. All the other earthly priests sinned, my dear friends, and came short of the glory of the Lord. In the past episodes, I remember, we learned that the priests also offered burnt offerings for the sins that they committed because they were required to bring a young bull. I think I even brought a picture of a young bull there. If they sinned, the text we've just read here above, my dear friends, uh, a minute ago, the, the text in Hebrews here, we... The text tells us that the earthly priests were sinners. It's clear. Aaron was the first high priest, but he has many defects because Jesus was the one in the earthly sanctuary that was represented by those priests. Those priests were representing Jesus. So when you saw Aaron, he was representing Jesus. But Aaron was a sinner. Aaron was just a human being. After he died, his term of office ended. But after he died, many also eh, became priests. <coughs> Excuse me. After Aaron, there were many other priests. Another one dies, another one comes in. Another one dies, another one comes in. Another one dies, another one comes in. But after, after Jesus died on the cross, that system ended. That system ended. It's so disgusting when you see how the Catholic religion hates Jesus Christ, you know. 
because Jesus became our high priest. Our Jesus is our savior because he, unlike the other priests, he conquered the cross. He conquered. And if you refuse this theory that Jesus became our high priest, you are supporting the Catholicism, you are supporting Babylon, you are supporting the Antichrist. The Antichrist who's fighting Christ. You are supporting the Pope and his false theories. My dear friends, Jesus conquered the cross. Jesus conquered death and God everlasting life. The Catholic cross is still... By the way, when you go in the Catholic, you're going to find a cross, an ugly cross. An ugly. By the way, they make it ugly because it signifies something. It signifies something. In fact, let me show you something. You see this? This, this, this ugly cross is also a cross of Satanists. Satanists believe in the ugly cross because it's a mockery of the cross of Jesus. Look who else has the ugly cross with him. And they've maintained this, these popes. They've maintained this. Now, the Catholic cross, if you, you go again, you make a nice one which is not as ugly as this satanic ugly cross, which the Pope always carries to mock Jesus. You, you go, you make a, a, a beautiful cross. Eh? You make it nice, nice, and then you, you put, you, because your fathers in Catholic tell you to put Jesus there. You put Jesus there. It has a meaning. That is why that cross is not empty. That is why that cross is not empty. That cross in a Catholic church still has Jesus hanging on it. This is the church that will persecute Christ's children, my dear friends, because their testimony to, to the law uh, will, will, will make the Catholic to persecute them. So the Catholic will persecute because you are going to refuse to join to worship Lucifer. But it's, uh, it's here now that I have to make an announcement, very, very important announcement, that my dear friends, the Catholic will persecute you for nothing. For nothing. You will die for nothing. <laughs> you will die because you keep on defending the Sabbath. The Sabbath. Uh, by the way, the Catholic, the Catholic themselves, Ukraine is a, I think, number one Catholic country on this planet. Number one. Because it was consecrated to the Sacred Heart of Mary in, 1030, 30, 30, in the 1030s. Long time ago. And to, there are things which they are not showing you on TV. But when you go to other channels, when you do your research, you're going to see those things. Many Ukrainians are being slaughtered inside the Catholics. They are being slaughtered eating mass. Now, where are they going to resurrect from? Where are they going? You die in a wrong system of worship. Where are you going when Jesus comes back? You're going to hell. And they are being cheated that they are going to heaven. So, Lucifer is that evil. He's going to kill his own people who have been worshipping him. <laughs> okay? His time is up. Eh? Lucifer's time is up. He's been alive for 6,000 years. Now it's game over. He's going to kill those people who are worshipping him, the Catholics. After killing them, he comes to kill you, the SDAs, and the other 560 Sabbath observing. You're not the only ones observing the Sabbath. He's going to kill all of you. Why is he going to kill you? You, uh, when he kills all these Sabbath observers apart from SDA, are they going to heaven? Okay, then he also kills you, the SDA, because of Sabbath. Are you going to heaven? You should think. Then you should start looking for something that is going to differentiate you from the 560 other Sabbath observing churches, from the Catholics who are being killed. Something that will differentiate you from these people. And that thing we are bringing it to you, you are fast to deny. Because you can't see the spirit that is making you to be fast to deny the spirit. The, sp the spirit of prophecy, my dear friends. Get the present truth. Get the spirit. Come with us on our journey. Love us. Don't hate us. Don't. If you are saying we are sinners, don't hate What What sin have we committed? What sin am I committing? By saying that that guy is an antichrist? The Pope? That is the sin? By telling you that the world is ending, that is a sin that makes you hate me with passion. The thing that is making you to hate me is Lucifer. His Lucifer has doubled his efforts now. He has doubled his effort. 
Okay, so every time you see in the Catholic, they still put Jesus on the cross. It means they are re-crucifying Jesus. They are mocking Jesus and you have been mocking Jesus if you've been carrying a cross that has Jesus on it. You are re-crucifying. Jesus is not healthy. Jesus left the cross in 2,000 years ago. So for 2,000 years, you've been wanting him to remain on the cross. Every time the Pope does that, he's insulting Jesus and you follow like a blind snake. You follow. So by so doing, my friends, you are praising the devil. The most and, and most people do this thing ignorantly. Billions upon billions, just like billions in Muslim. You're mocking Jesus. Non-stop. Our Jesus is not on that cross. He left the cross, conquered it. Conquered it and even the tomb. It's better if you were carrying an empty tomb. But even the tomb, he conquered, he conquered it, my dear children of God. Aaron, going back to our sanctuary story, Aaron was a sinner. Jesus was sinless. Jesus was sinless. He is in heaven right now. He's in heaven right now, working on your case and mine. He's in heaven right now, dealing with judgment. And when the people saw that Moses delayed, my dear friends, we, uh, we, okay, let, let, let's read here. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Make us gods, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what he became, what, what is become of him. And Aaron, and Aaron said unto them, my dear friends, break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives and your sons and your daughters, and bring them unto me. Aaron sinned. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in the e in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. Can you can you imagine? And he raised them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel which brought thee out of, it, of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made the proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose. They rose up early in the morning. You see, when you are in sin, you even become energetic. Sin makes you wake up very early in the morning. And this is exactly what's happening even today. You are so motivated, but you are wrong. You know, it's like, you tell someone, my, my people, you are lost, sir. And the people who are telling you are little children. You're in a race, huh? You're in a race. You are running. And then you find little children somewhere. It's a, you know, I used to run also some time back in the 90s when I was at, at school. I was a long distance runner. So you, you, are, you are running a long distance journey. And, and, and then you find little kids who are dirty looking. They don't even know how to play video games. Then they tell you, sir, you are lost. Your friends turned this way. They went this way. No, I know what I'm doing. No, how, you look down on them. Uh, you start going to the left. That is what you are doing, my dear friends. Be <laughs> if you found a rich man there, educated with professorship degrees like we have today, and even Pharisees, degrees have been there, even during Noah's time. Educated guys were there. But which educated guy entered the ark? Even during Jesus' time. Theor theologians were there during Jesus' time. You will say, no, I can't listen to you. You will continue running, going the other direction. And you even increase your speed. <laughs> Not knowing that where you are going, there is a lion. The kids saw the lion. You will just find the lion there. You just, But you see, these guys woke up early in the morning. Let's continue. Okay? They... they, they woke up early, they rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. To play, like some of you, most of you are playing. And the Lord said unto Moses, <laughs> get, Go, get thee down for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. And they have made them a molten calf, calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed their untold and said, These be thy gods, all Israel, which 
have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. This, that, that, that was from Exodus 30, 32 verse 1 to 8. My dear friends, Moses pleaded with the Lord on the behalf of the people and God spared these people at that disgusting behavior. I am going to plead to God, but our hands are tied. Our hands are tied. God is formulating his army. God is formulating his army of 144,000 and it's very little percentage, very little. And God's time is, God is a God of time. These guys were lucky. These guys, the, you know, in the, la, in the less than five years, the worshiping of the beast, my dear friends, the 666, the Sunday day of worship to disobey God's fourth commandment of the seventh day, true Sabbath, the rejection of the present truth of the sealing of the faithful will be a bottom-up approach. The masses, the, you know, bottom-up approach means instead of a command or an influence or a bad behavior to come from the leaders, it will come from down, going up. That's what's exactly going to happen. Because the devil's influence will not just be on Pope Francis. It, it will be on the people. People will love the wrong character. People will love the Antichrist. The Pope Francis is now becoming the most loved man on earth. You can't see it. Even you, you love him. <laughs> That's why you're failing to expose him. That's why you're shutting us up. We are your fellow church members. We are trying to expose the man of sin to warn God's children. <laughs> but you're shutting us up. You don't even feel yourselves. Eh? The certain spirits, the spirits are too strong. So the bottom-up approach, the masses will have an invisible hand that will stir up these masses to call for the worship of Sunday. The Pope and his agenda has come, my dear friends. It has come. Do not sleep. Wake up. Refuse the idolatry. Aaron was a man just like us. Aaron was a man. He sinned, but our Jesus was never tempted to sin. Jesus never sinned. Unlike Aaron, our high priest is one who conquered death, who never sinned, who lives forever. Colossians 3 verse 1 to 4. Let's read it together. If if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth. Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above. Not, you know, your things are, get, hey, let's get a job. Hey, let's get promoted. Hey, let, you are thinking about your mansions. There is no more mansions. It's da Go and ask people in Mariupol in Ukraine if their mansions are there. Go and ask them. <laughs> a storm is coming. We are telling you the storm is coming. It will destroy all the mansions, those ones you are thinking about today. It will destroy all your degrees, those ones you are treasuring today. All those programs you are studying, you, are, you, are, you want to be a professor, you keep yourself busy. Some of you don't even sleep. The whole night you are studying for SCCA. I've been teaching SCCA for years. 15 years of my life I've been a lecturer. Lecturing not little children, but college. I had my own college and ran it for five years. Employed people. So you don't ever, don't think I'm mad. I know what I'm talking about. People don't sleep. Busy studying. Uh, SCCA. Accredited, chartered accountants. <laughs> SIMA. I used to be a lecturer of SIMA. I used to be a lecturer of SCCA. Zika, this local accounts thing. Economics. I have lectured. All my life I've been a lecturer. And a consultant. In econ I'm an economist. I know what I'm talking about. So you are thinking, you sleep, you sn even when you are snoring, you are thinking of those things. Your riches. Because that education is riches. It's the same thing. Because you want to get, be educated because you want to earn more. You want your salary to be incre salary increments, promotions. At this time, at this time, that's when you are doing that. Instead of waking up at 02 up to 04, reading books of the spirit of prophecy, reading the present truth, so that you can know really what is this requirement that makes the number small. <laughs> you need to get your ticket into the boat. Noah's boat. You need to get your ticket quickly. Set your affection. Let's continue to the verse. We are reading here. The Bible is even warning you. Paul was one of the greatest men the Bible ever has. Because Paul was given a prophecy. Prophecy of where we are today. Okay. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. 
where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Jesus Christ in God. You are dead. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. My dear friends, this is a good verse. Oh God, oh glory, mercy. Paul was shown 2022. And I'll be reading you more of, by the way, more of Paul's revelations of where we are today. You see, let me tell you why Paul was shown. Let's pause there a little bit. There's a reason why Jesus showed Paul the future. Remember, we've, got, we've had two disappointments. The, first, the, 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 the latest disappointment was in 1844 when people thought Jesus would return. Then God brought up, up a prophet. Her name was Sister Ellen G. White, a prophetess. The only prophet, the last prophet. There's no other prophet after that one. All these who are coming are false prophets. To show us the future to interpret prophecy. This book is all about prophecy. To interpret prophecy properly so that the eyes of people can be opened. You can have the Bible, but you don't know prophecy. You need a prophet who will interpret it to you. That is what we are saying, the present truth. That is the spirit of prophecy. That is where you need Ellen White to guide you. And you need the Holy Spirit to be with you. Because you can read volumes and volumes of Ellen White, but you are missing it. That is why even people on Sunday churches read the Bible, but they are missing it. Because they think with their theology, with their degrees and masters in theology, they can understand for themselves. That is where Pharisees also missed it. And the Paul was there to interpret it. Jesus chose people who had no degrees in theology. Jesus chose fishermen. And after the fishermen, this, during the fishermen's time of preaching, Paul came and joined them. Paul. And then they were like, but Jesus says, I'll come, I'll come. They thought about his second. So the first disappointment was during Paul's time. The second one was in 1844. There is no third one. <laughs> this time Jesus is coming. I am telling you, Ask Pope Francis. Ask Biden, the first Catholic president of the United States. Ask, ask, ask little children who don't even go to church. Ask Jesus. So Paul was trying to correct the situation, to tell them that, no, 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 guys, the second coming of Christ is not in our era. It is in a, another generation. That's why these verses were given to, this prophecy was given to Paul. This verse of Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 to 4 talks about us. It says, If ye then be risen with Jesus Christ, seek those things which are above where Jesus Christ sits on the right hand of God. What is that meaning? <laughs> what was, was Jesus... Was Jesus sitting at the right hand of God that time? No, he wasn't. He wasn't. Because he went in the Holy of Holies in 1844. So Paul was given a prophecy of us today. Set your affection on things above, not on things on this earth. Talking to you, Paul is talking to you today. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in, in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then you shall also appear with him in glory. This is your prophecy. Now, Aaron, my dear friends, on the other hand, on the, uh, and, and the other many, many high priests who were there, who succeeded him, uh, these guys sacrificed lamps on a daily basis. Every day, there was a death in the sanctuary of a lamp. Our Savior Jesus died only once and rose to eternal life. We need no longer to sacrifice thousands of lamps daily. This ended once Jesus became our sacrifice. The sanctuary that Aaron entered was a man-made sanctuary. It was just a copy of the heavenly sanctuary where Jesus is on the right hand of God. Jesus saves in the sanctuary that was not constructed by man, my dear friends. A sanctuary that God himself constructed. You can't even imagine the beauty of the heavenly sanctuary. We've been talking of how beautiful. The beautiful thing about Jesus Christ is that he is both our high priest and he's also our judge. The earthly priests were not to finish the work. They, were, they just began the work and symbolized. Those guys just symbolized the perfect and original copy of what the earthly sanctuary represented. My dear friends, Aaron did not have the power to forgive sins. He didn't. 
Jesus has the power to forgive your sins. Aaron did not choose to be your mediator. God chose Aaron. My dear friends, Jesus chose to be your mediator. You see the difference is here? Jesus chose. He wasn't forced to come and be your, be your mediator, no. Jesus loved you and chose you before you knew him. My dear friends, we are going to end. Uh, this is part four, but I've divided it into A and B. So please watch B because B is also uploaded. I've uploaded both of them at the same time. So you have them at the same time. Those of you who are interested in the great events that are going to happen, that are happening, you need, you need to be interested in watching part B immediately. I would, if I was you, I was, I was not going to watch it even another day or another day. I would watch it immediately. Waste your bundles on productive things. Waste your bundles on things that are going to take you to heaven. May God bless you. Please watch part B of the fourth part of our sanctuary series. Yeah.